Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new laptop review video and you could probably assume that it's again AMD Ryzen 4000 mobile which we took a look at a few weeks ago with the 4900HS which was built inside an Asus ROG laptop. Extremely solid performance and now we have this XMG Apex 15 on my table and from the outside it kind of reminds me a little bit of my Nissan GTR and because if you look inside the car, it looks like from 10 years ago and looks like it's not really up to date anymore. But inside, the power is from a different planet. XMG sends some CPUs with it and that's because this thing works with desktop CPUs. We have a Ryzen uh, 3600X, we have a 3700X and we also have a 3950X. So you can actually put a 3950X AMD desktop 16 core CPU inside this notebook and that's something we will try today. To show it a little bit more up close and to show and present to you what kind of product feel you get with this thing and why I'm comparing it with my Nissan GTR. If you open it it's rather elegant and clean and if you touch it it feels like it's a little bit made of plastic especially if you turn it around and take a look at the back side. This doesn't really represent I think the quality or the performance this thing has. This XMG Apex 15 by the way is one of the very first prototypes that's why I'm not exactly sure or entirely sure if it will represent 100% the final product. They will certainly make some changes to the product if it's not 100% final. Performance wise it will be final that's what it told me. It also comes with a 62 watt hours battery which can be easily replaced or removed from uh, the notebook and everything about the XMG Apex 15 kind of represents that you can upgrade and change parts easily. After removing the battery and removing the screws which are surrounding the back plates you can just slide it up and remove it and that's really really simple and so much more convenient than most other notebooks I, I recently tested. You will straight spot that there are two M.2 slots on this device. We have one already occupied with a 970 Pro NVMe drive with 512GB. We also have two memory DIMMs on here, currently Corsair Ventions 2666C18, not the fastest memory for sure. XMG also sent me two of those sticks from Crucial, 16GB each. 3200, unfortunately it's only CL22. That's why I quickly decided to buy my own sticks. It's 3200 CL16 and this should be really quick and should help to get a little bit extra performance out of this thing and we will quickly insert those. I usually use one of those Corsair MP600 SSDs with 1TB for my testing, have all my benchmarks on it. And because we have a second M.2 slot anyway, I'm just going to install this as well. In addition, there's also a hard drive bay available on the side where you could install, for example, a SATA 2.5 inch drive Slots are available on top, not going to use it for now though. And underneath the heatsink we can spot an AMD Ryzen desktop CPU. And next to it we have an Nvidia GPU. Depending on your exact model it would be an RTX 2060 or RTX 2070. Now you might ask how is it even possible that we're putting a 3950X 16 core desktop CPU inside one of those very tiny laptops. Of course the cooling solution itself looks nice and good. We have plenty of copper on here, we have six heat pipes in total, we have a ton of surface area on those very very tiny and thin fins. However, this can certainly not replace a desktop cooling unit and 
The key to do that is to reduce the TDP of the 105 watt desktop processor to 65 watt. And now you might think, but if we're reducing the power consumption by 40%, aren't we also going to lose 40% of performance? Not exactly. Today's processors will not lose performance in a linear way. Therefore, if you're reducing the power from like 105 to 65 watt, which is about 40%, you will maybe lose 20% performance, but you still have 16 cores. And we will see how the performance of this inside a laptop will be like. Experts among you might notice directly that XMG is using a Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which is something I personally absolutely appreciate. And it will also mean that you don't really have to open it and replace a thermal paste because there's already a very high quality product underneath. The only thing you could do to upgrade or even increase performance is applying a liquid metal. However, it's again naked copper, not nickel plated copper, which could result uh, to problems with using liquid metal. However, I might have a solution for that in an upcoming video. Stay tuned for that. Do you know what I really appreciate? The fact that I don't have to use Wi-Fi to install the Windows updates. I can just use a cable. In five minutes and I will be ready. I'm just in between testing, spent about two or three hours right now trying to get the memory to run, which is not as easy as I thought it would be. I got a special BIOS version where I have additional access to like AMD CBS uh, submenu in the BIOS, which is usually not available but it doesn't really matter what kind of memory speed or memory timing I'm setting, nothing gets really set and everything, and every time it doesn't work out, I have to reset the BIOS, which means I have to open the thing, remove the BIOS battery and everything, so that's not so convenient. That's why I will stop with the memory tuning for now. We'll keep the 2666C18. And now I changed for some Ryzen Master testing at the moment, and. Really, who made this software? I mean, in general, I really appreciate that AMD has the Ryzen Master. It's, it's really cool and it's better than XCU because it gives you typically more access. But the language and the translation, I mean, the translation itself is so wrong from English to German and then you cannot change the language. I first have to install it and then go to the install folder and delete the language files in order to force it to have English. So annoying, really so annoying. This is by the way how the BIOS looks like. Um, I mean you have all the options, you have the PBS and CBS AMD submenu and then you can go for example to the UMC common options, go to DDR4 common options, timing configurator, accept. And then you could theoretically change the clock speed of the DDR4 modules but it doesn't really matter what you set, it doesn't apply it for me. Also, if you want to change, for example, the timings, then you have to set it in hex values, which is not really an issue for me. I mean, just changing from hex to decimal is not really a problem, but it's really inconvenient for normal users, I would say. I would just expect to have normal values here. It would be much easier for an end user. First quick test is Cinemesh R20 running it while keeping Ryzen Master open. We can see directly the CPU is hitting the TDC and EDC limits, 60 amps, TDC, 90 amps, EDC. CPU power is roughly 55 watt, which is not really that much. PPT limit is 88 watt, it's not reached, but TDC and EDC is maxed out, so the CPU cannot consume more. And temperature wise, cooling wise, this thing seems to be really good because we're in the region of about 75 degrees Celsius, which means we have about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius left headroom. So if we can manage to increase TDC and EDC, we should be able to get more performance out of this thing. Performance wise with about 7,000 points, really not bad for a laptop, considering that this is like 3900X desktop performance. That's quite impressive. Looking at the single score result, 474 is pretty much in line with the 4900HS, but multi-score is so much higher. 
In Ryzen Master, if I go to manual, unfortunately, I have no options to change TDC or EDC and those options, but I can enable Precision Boost Overdrive, PBO. And there you can see TDC is set to 114 and EDC to 168. I'm just going to apply those settings and try it quickly. We can see it changed from 60 and 90 to 114 and 168. Also, PPT changed from 88 to 100. 42, that should help if this works out correctly. Well, that didn't really work out well. Maybe we should try smaller steps. So 75 TDC, 105 EDC. We can already see that we should have higher performance because previously we didn't exceed 75 degrees Celsius. Now it's about 81 degrees Celsius, 8,000 points. Maybe AMD will come up with a solution for socket AM5 where this will not be an issue anymore because, yeah, I mean for desktop, you can just rotate your cooler slightly to prevent this, but in a notebook, it's not really possible to rotate this cooling unit before you remove it. Luckily, the CPU is not damaged, but I will replace the 3950X for some tests now with a 3700X. Let's quickly take a look at some benchmarks. We were starting off with Cinebench R20. We already discussed some of the numbers now in a chart so you can get a better understanding how to interpret those numbers. And stock the 3950X in the Apex 15 is about 7000 points in R15 Multi, which is basically the same as a 3900X 12 core CPU in a desktop PC. The Apex 15 with the 3950X with TDC and EDC limits unlocked, which is just what we did. Uh, we have about 8,000 points, which is far ahead of a 3900X desktop and considering that this is a laptop, very, very nice result. Adobe Premiere 2020 4K video rendering about 11 minutes doesn't really change much if you're unlocking TDC, EDC limits right here, still about one and one and a half minutes away from a 3950X in a desktop PC, still very good results. Now I asked myself the question, how is it with gaming? With the 3950X, having 16 cores and then we're limiting the power or we're reducing the power by 40%, I had the theory that it might have a negative impact on gaming. If you would compare it, for example, with the 3700X, which has half the cores and then you don't limit it that much. So the individual cores would have more power. Eight cores might run at a higher frequency. Therefore, benchmarking in gaming might be higher with a CPU that has a lower amount of cores. At least that was my theory. First result is with the 3950X core frequency in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p typical benchmark scene. All the cores are running somewhere between 3600 and 4100 megahertz. And if we change to the 3700X, the result doesn't really change much. It looks pretty much identical. All the cores are also somewhere between 3600 and 4100 megahertz. And this gets just confirmed if we're looking at my benchmarking numbers. Again, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p ultra settings, 3700X, minimum 52 FPS, average 71 FPS, 3950X, minimum 53 FPS, and average 96 FPS. So there's not really much of a difference. I would say it's basically the same. It's one FPS more or less, doesn't really change much. Therefore, you can even use the 3950X 16 core CPU for gaming instead of using 3700X, because I thought if you would buy this for just gaming and not like productive stuff, it might be better to get a CPU with a lower amount of cores. Or it also means if you're only gaming, you don't have to buy the 3950X. You can also stick with the 3700X because it doesn't change much for you for gaming. One more thing I would like to point out is regarding the M.2 slot. I just performed a crystal disk mark run with the Samsung 970 Pro SSD, which is inside the first M.2 slot. And this one is running at generation three, which you can see with the result. However, if I changing back to the other drive, which is my Corsair MP600, in theory, if it would be generation four, it would be somewhere between 4,500 and 5,500. 50, but now it's only 1500, which means that this drive is running at generation two only. So we have two M.2 slots. One, one is running generation three and one is running generation two. Do you know what I just thought? How about we drastically improve cooling performance and see how much you can theoretically get out of this thing? Pretty cool that this thing has a full HDMI connector. I just flipped it around, opened the backside attach the monitor. What about using this liquid nitrogen container?
This moment when even the cat is questioning what the hell I'm doing here. Just about 0 degrees Celsius and that should already help because lowering the temperature also reduces power consumption of the CPU, therefore this should already yield in more performance. Now this is going in the right direction, almost 8800 points. CPU cooler is just sitting at about 20 degrees Celsius, obviously the heat transfer through heat pipes is not the best. That's why I would assume that we have about 0 degrees Celsius at the CPU down there. Still. It's already helping that the fans don't spin at all. That's quite cool. 9200 points in R15 with a notebook. Absolutely insane. Managed to increase TDC to 95 and EDC to 130 amps. And here we have the cooling result. Still running happily at about minus 35 degrees Celsius right here. So far no real issues. CPU really seems to like cold. Now we already have plenty of ice down there, especially in the area of the heat pipes. And that's also the reason why we are going to stop this experiment right here. I don't want to break this machine. I don't think that XMG would appreciate this. But it just shows that if you can somehow cool a CPU just enough and also the VRMs of the mainboard, then you can really push a lot out of those things. And even considering that the VRMs are not made for this at all, it was still able to run 16 cores with about 4.1 to 4.2 gigahertz through Cinebench R20. So much about the XMG Apex 15, very impressive notebook, considering that you're getting desktop performance in a notebook. It's kind of a notebook because your battery runtime will really suffer from the performance. It's only 65 watt hour battery and the laptop has a 230 watt PSU. Therefore, you can kind of do the math that it will not run long time if you really put load onto the machine. Otherwise, technically really, really nice, especially that you have so many options that you can really upgrade things. You have two times M.2 where you can populate the slots yourself. You can install two memory DIMMs, you can install the SATA drive and everything is really made for doing it individually yourself. That's something I really appreciate. You can change the CPU to whatever you want to use. The only other thing I don't really like is the case. The case really feels low quality and does not reflect the performance of this thing. It feels like a notebook from 2010. They should really change the case of this machine. It's, the case does not reflect the power and that's really unfortunate. Otherwise, they could also improve the BIOS. The BIOS itself is cool that you have some, so much access. You can access AMD CBS menu and all this stuff, but you have access to AMD CBS for adjusting memory and everything, which is really cool. But then it would need further adjustments like changing from hex values to like decimal values and just checking if all the memory options or in general the options even work because for me I could not really set the memory timings or memory frequency which is unfortunate but I think if they spend more time developing on the BIOS I'm sure they can get this working. Otherwise absolutely impressive machine, desktop performance for on the way. Thanks for joining in and see you next time. Bye.